Algebra 2 Cram, New York State, Algebra 2 Regents, Common Core, Trigonometric Function Basics, Unit Circle, Concept Number 2, Trigonometric Values. The odds of someone doing exactly what you tell them to do is pretty slim, but I guarantee that if you cram with me, you'll become an Algebra 2 Master. What we're doing here is so effective. I'm coaching you to turn your desires and wants of getting perfect A's or perfect test scores into a new paradigm. I want to include everyone who needs a boost in Algebra 2, okay? And if I could stick every math student with a syringe containing a healthy dose of eye-opening awareness of their inner mathematical genius, I would. Inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com to order this complete cram session. I know you have a lot of peers, classmates, and colleagues who could really benefit from this cram session as well. So be sure to spread the word to them and tell them to inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com so they too can order this complete cram session. You'll want for them to have this knowledge because they'll make great study buddies. And finally, um, the concept of cramming often has a negative connotation, but what people are actually thinking of is hurrying, and hurrying is the result of fear, and it's consequently destructive. We're not hurrying here, okay? We're cramming. There's a difference. Hurrying is jam-packing tons of unorganized information into your mental, spiritual DNA over a tiny amount of elapsed time, Whereas cramming is taking quantum leaps in your understanding in what seems like an instant. So let's delve into the concept of the unit circle and trigonometric values. Unit circle and trigonometric values for the quadrantal angles. If P is the point at the intersection of the unit circle and the terminal side of angle theta, what is the value of the X coordinate and the Y coordinate? Definitely press pause if you need to, and I'll give you a moment to think. All right, so in the previous cram session, we established that the radius has a measurement of one, okay? Um, we'll now see that this simplifies finding uh, trigonometric values. If P is the point of intersection of the unit circle with the terminal side at angle theta, then we can definitely establish what the values for x and y are. Okay, so here we have the initial side of our angle theta. And obviously, um, that's the x-coordinate goes to this extent, okay? And then in establishing the angle, the terminal side ray, which also intersects the unit circle, goes to the extent of um, this phi coordinate. We're going to see that the x coordinate is also going to be deemed as um, the cosine of theta. Why? Because what we can do now is resolve the, um, the ray or the radius into its x and y coordinates. And in doing so, we end up with a right triangle formation, okay? And we know that the adjacent side that's adjacent to an angle, it, you can also call it the cosine of that angle. Sorry for the lag time. And um, the, the, the side opposite the angle can be deemed as the sine. Well, actually not directly. The, the, um, the cosine of theta is going to be equivalent to, let's see, 
x over r, but in our instance, r has a value of 1, so it's implicit. We don't have to write it out. Hence, we get the cosine of theta for um, the x coordinate. Okay? And we can also go back to trigonometry and know that the side opposite uh, the angle theta is going to be deemed the sine of theta. Again, there's a little lag, sorry. Just trying to squish this all in. But when we're here um, in our Cartesian coordinate plane, the sine of theta is going to be equivalent to y over r. And here our y is um, the sine of theta divided by 1 again, because our r value is 1. Therefore, it's simply going to just be the sine of theta, okay? So hopefully I didn't confuse you too much and things are working out mentally for you. So again, opposite over um, adjacent, opposite over hypotenuse equals the cosine of theta I mean the sine of theta or the y coordinate and um, the adjacent side with respect to the angle over the hypotenuse is going to be the cosine of theta, all right? It might be a little confusing for those of you who are just being introduced to this concept, but if you go through this entire cram session, you'll definitely have better understanding. Okay, so we've established that. So basically we have our answer x the x-coordinate is the cosine of theta, and the y-coordinate is the sine of theta. But what this also means is that the coordinate points where the unit circle intersects the x and y axes um, can be used to conveniently find the trigonometric values for all the quadrantal angles. And in case you forgot, a quadrantal angle is an angle with the terminal side on the x or y axis. Okay, so these are all quadrantal angles. So let me just um, demonstrate what I mean by this. For zero degrees, um, with the unit circle having a radius of one, the points of intersection are going to be one, zero. Therefore, the cosine of zero is going to be one and the sine of zero degrees is going to be zero. Let's all go to the next quadrantal angle, 90 degrees. Since the unit circle has a radius of one, um, this means that it intersects the y-axis at one. Therefore, for 90 degrees, the cosine of theta is going to be zero, and the sine of 90 degrees is going to be one, okay? Let's also explore this concept over here for 180 degrees. Since the unit circle has a radius of 1, that means it's going to intersect the x-axis on the negative side at negative 1. Okay, and we don't have to worry about the radius measurement being negative because measuring the radius, you need to incorporate the distance formula, and the distance formula squares the x term, so a any negative squared are going to yield positive values. That's just a quick aside, okay? Therefore, the cosine of 180 degrees is negative one, and the sine of 180 degrees is zero. Last but not least, we can explore this concept for 270 degrees. Since the unit circle has a radius of one, it intersects the negative y-axis at zero, negative one. Therefore, its cosine is going to be zero and the sine of 270 degrees is negative one you could also go backwards and say like this quadrantal angle is 360 degrees this could be deemed i don't know negative 90 negative 180 negative 270 etc okay all right so 
Intellectual comprehension of this material is not difficult. And after sh the short amount of time it takes to complete the entire cram session, you'll be prepared to answer a battery of questions about Algebra 2 concepts, which also includes several trigonometry concepts, okay? So inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com to order this complete cram session.